Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at events inside of Roblox Studio. So first of all, what is an event? Well, basically an event is um, something that allows other objects to get notified, okay? For example, if the player touches a certain object, um, what we can do is connect to that event, the touched event, and be notified when the player has touched that object. Okay, it's similar to calling a function, but a lot more versatile and allows us to basically plug in as many things as we want. Okay, so for example, we could have um, a large field of hundreds of cubes, for example, and when the player, um, for example, clicks a button, all those cubes could change to green. Okay, that's what an event would allow us to do. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and create ourselves a little button, and what this is going to do is turn green when we go inside of it, okay? When we walk into the object, it's going to change color. So, for this, I'm just going to go ahead and create ourselves a part right here. Let's rename this one to our touch button. I'm going to change the size. Where is that? That is over here. I'm going to change the size to be... Uh, let's just say 3x3x3, three by three by three. so we've got this 3x3 three three cube, cube right here. Um, let's go ahead, change the color to be red by default, and we'll change the material to be neon, so it is glowing. Uh, while we're at it, let's also go enable anchored, and disable can collide, because we want the player to be able to walk through this object. Alright, maybe move it up a tiny bit like so, and there we go. So now let's make this object turn green when we touch it. So I'm going to attach to it a script right here. This script I'm going to rename to be touch button just like with our object. And here we go. So first things first we need to get our actual part okay the touch button part that we're going to be uh, checking. So I'll create a local variable called part which equals script whoops script dot parent the script right here, the parent object is going to be the touch button. That is what we are accessing. So now that we have reference to this touch button, what we can do is connect the touched event. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, if we type down part, then put a dot, uh, you'll see this list pops up with all the various different things we can look at. And if you scroll down, you'll see that most of them have this blue little, uh, blue little cube next to it. This is a property. Um, if you look into the properties tab on the bottom right, basically this is all of the fields that we can modify. You know, the name, the color, um, the opacity, the parent object, the size, the position. But if you scroll down a bit more, you'll start to see these lightning bolts, okay? Uh, stuff like child added, changed, uh, touched, touch ended, and these are all events, okay? So these lightning bolts are events that we can subscribe to or connect to, um, and we will basically be listening for when these events are called, and when they are called, we'll be notified, so we can do uh, whatever we want to do with it. The event we want to do is go down and find touched, okay? Now, touched is, is an event that every part in Roblox has, okay? Every part in Roblox that can be touched by a player or entered by a player, has this touched event. And this touched event gets called or invoked once a player enters or touches a part, okay? And what we're doing here is we are gonna connect to it. So let's then go colon connect. And inside of the parentheses here, what we need to do is create a new function that is gonna be called, okay? So we're gonna create a function here. And we need one parameter to be sent over. And the object that's gonna be sent over is going to be the touched part okay so basically um, whatever part touched us that's going to be sent over in our case this is going to be the player when the player touches the part but it doesn't have to be the player um, it could also be a projectile it could be a rolling ball that rolls through this cube this event is still going to be invoked so um, when the player or when anything touches this object this touched event is going to invoke and since we are connected to it this code is gonna run inside of here. So what we can do is print to the output, and let's just say, um, uh, we'll go touch button was touched. Okay, we can press play and test it out. So we've got our touch button over here, we got our changing uh, color cubes from the previous lessons. Let's go up to this cube and if we look on the console, there we go. Uh, touch button was touched, 
16 times, and that is because our player is made up of a number of different parts. We've got our hands, our feet, our legs, our torso, our head, our hair. Um, so that's why it's being called multiple times. Okay, but as you can see, it is detecting when we are touching this cube right here. As you can see, it goes up, goes up again. Um, and events are very powerful in this way. As well as these pre-made events that these objects have, you can also go ahead and create your own. Now, in the next lesson, we'll be going over actually uh, creating, um, you know, unique and custom events. But for now, let's go and change this color to red. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this print liner code right here, and we are going to make the color green. So for that, we can go part.color equals color3.new. And if you remember, color3 requires three different parameters, a red, green, and blue value. Now, since we want to make this color green, we're going to give it a zero for the red. For the green, we're going to give it a one and a zero for the blue. So this is going to be an entirely blue or an entirely green uh, button. Okay, so we can save that, press play, and let's see if it turns green when we touch it. So let's go over here, and there we go. It has turned green. So that is how you can use events for these custom little buttons. Um, you could even maybe have checkpoints as well. So when the player jumps and lands on a platform, you can register, change the player's team to be uh, linked to that checkpoint. Uh, there's a wide range of different things you could do. Now, as well as parts having events, uh, pretty much everything has events inside of Roblox Studio. For example, we can have an event that gets called once a player joins the game, or we could have an event that gets called once a light is turned on. Okay, so let's have a look at an event that gets called when a player joins the game. So to do this, what we need to do is first of all access our players service right here, which basically uh, manages all of the players in the game. And to get that, we can go game dot players, then go dot player added. As you can see right here, it is an event. Go connect, and we need to create a function with a parameter of the player that is joining. Okay, so game dot players accessing this service right here. Then we are looking at the player added event and we are connecting to that event. So when a brand new player joins the game, that player added event is going to be called and that means that this code is going to be ran. Now, let's just say we want to go ahead and um, print to the console uh, the player has joined the game. Okay, so for that we could go print and then we could go player.name, add two dots to basically combine this with another string. And then in quotation marks, we can put a space and go has joined the game. Okay, just like that. So now when we go ahead, press F5 to play the game, we should see down here in the output, it says, uh, there we go, I have joined the game. Okay, so we've got all this set up. Uh, we've had a look at events here. I'm just going to remove this for now since uh, it's good to really put code that only relates to that script in that script. Um, so we're changing the touch button color to green. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at creating some custom events and then connecting those events up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next lesson.